Hi guys, Owen sent me this OW Actin Beam Multimeter for free, and in this video I will share my thoughts on it. But first, just in case you haven't seen my unboxing video of this multimeter, let's see what comes in the box. First of all, there's this basic set of probes with PVC insulated leads, nothing special there. Then there's these alligator clips, which can be attached to the probes. The tips have threads on them, so you'll have to screw these clips on. Benefit of that is that these won't come off easily, not by accident. But of course, attaching these will take a little bit more time. Including these in the package with the multimeter is a really nice, I really like that. And then there's the thermocouple for measuring temperatures. That's all, let's look at the meter. First I will insert the battery. And unlike the P35 from O1 that I previously reviewed, this one uses 9V battery. And speaking of P35, this is kind of an updated version of P35 series, so I won't go through every single detail of this multimeter. Instead, I recommend you to watch the P35 review in addition to this one, because so many things are similar in these two meters. Okay, the battery is in, and we are almost ready to turn this multimeter on. But before that, let's see what we can actually see by looking at this multimeter. Okay, there's microamp and milliamp input, 20 amp input, and rest of the mode share the one input jack. Very basic, very basic things. Good thing that microamps isn't in the volts input jack, like in some multimeters. This multimeter can measure all the basic things, volts, resistance, diode, capacitance, frequency, temperature, and NCV, which is non-contact voltage detection, it can detect live wires when they are near the top of this multimeter. Then there's transistor gain tester, and of course, current modes, micromilli, and amps. And apart from one difference, the buttons are very basic. There's a range which can override the outer ranging mode, select which selects different modes. There's this backlight hold button, which I will show you in just in a moment. And the frequency duty cycle slash delta button also has Bluetooth functionality. Bluetooth on this OW18 P works just like in the P35 series, and I have shown that in my previous video. Please check that out. Okay, now the multimeter is on, and we can see that the display is very clear and large. The viewing angles are, well, I think they are good. You can see the display very well when tilting the multimeter up to 45 degrees this way, and it is readable even further. And on this way you can tilt the multimeter much further, and it is readable, and it is good for applications where you have the multimeter on your hand or on the bench. But if you have a co-worker on the other side of the table, he or she may not see the display very well. But for many hobbies, that is not a problem. Next, let's see how is the backlight. First of all, it is bright. How is the display in the dark with backlight on? How readable is the display? Well, it is very readable. But does it affect the viewing angle? And it does. It has a little bit of negative effect on the, on the viewing angle. The display is almost unreadable when tilting above 45 degrees this way. But usually you don't need to look at the multimeter's display from that direction. Then comes the boring part. Measuring the accuracy of multimeters. Like many others have said, modern multimeters all have basic accuracy that is enough for the hobbyist. Here I am testing voltage references of 1.25 volts and it is spot on. Maybe one count off, maybe not even that. And same goes for the 10 volt voltage reference, that is spot on as well. When hobbyist is choosing between modern multimeters, accuracy is almost always good enough. Things that matter are speed of taking measurements, like you can see here, this is okay. Another thing is usability, for example how clear the display is, and in this one it is clear and big. And other thing is functions, and this multimeter indeed has functions that many others don't have, for example the Bluetooth functionality, which allows data logging. And if I haven't said it already, my target audience is electronics hobbyists, not electricians, not the professionals, the hobbyists. And for them, these features that I listed, those are, at least in my opinion, quite important things. I have recorded the speak over at a different time, but on this part I have the actual beeps that multimeter makes recorded by the camera. And, and there's something wrong. It might be the contacts on these probes. 
I have gold plated leads and just like for example Paul from Learn Electronics I'm going to test with better leads just to make sure that we are not testing the contact resistance of the leads or probes but the multimeters continuity tester instead. I think it got a little bit better with these better leads. It's not terrible anymore, it is usable. I happen to have some precision resistors on my desk, so let's try them. Just to prove you that the resistance measurements are just as accurate as the voltage measurements. I don't have any capacitors or current sources that are accurate, so these should be enough for accuracy testing. I have 10k resistor, it shows 10.00, that is perfect. Then I have this 3k resistor, and it shows basically 3 kilo ohms. No problems there, maybe one count off, that is perfectly okay. Enough of the testing, let's take this multimeter apart and see what's inside. So I have removed the battery cover, then there's this rubber boot. You can see there's some kind of lip or groove in here, so that rubber grabs really well to the body. You can see I can't slide this off, I have to kind of pull it up, then slide it off, so it holds into place very well. That is nice design, just like it should be. After taking that holster off, there's four screws, one in each corner, and after taking those off, we can separate the two parts of the body. And there's one thing I have to show you. There's this overlap between the halves of the body. Some call it blast protection, and it is there for... for... Think about sparks flying from inside the multimeter. Now they have to go through this long path between these overlapping lips of the body halves. Now we can see where the magic happens. The PCB of this multimeter. And let's see, input checks are on the right side. There's a fuse for the 20 amp jack. And a polyfuse for smaller current modes couple of PTCs, and that is basically it for the input protection. Then there's the dedicated multimeter IC. I put more information about it in the description. But main thing is this has all the calibration data on the EEPROM in digital form. So the calibration is more stable because cheap trimmer potentiometers could change their values over time. There's the Bluetooth module. It is different than on the P35, but it doesn't matter, it is compatible with the official Android and iOS applications made by Owen. So overall, I like the performance and functions of this multimeter, and I like that Owen made the choice to use this, this specific IC, which has digital calibration. Bluetooth is a nice thing, but the flashlight connected in parallel with the display's backlight I don't know, I don't really like that. But overall, considering how much this costs, I think this is a good multimeter for the price. That is my verdict. I hope you could like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.